Blog Talk Radio. Friends, welcome to another episode of Theology Matters with the Palouse. I am one half of your uh, hosting duo, Melissa Palou, and uh, my husband Devin is uh, literally um, in jail right now. He's he's headed um, to the um, jail here locally to do some uh, ministry and some training there um, with um, some uh, inmates um, that we have gotten to know. So I ask that you pray for him during that endeavor among many of the other endeavors that um, we are uh, taking part in right now through our ministry with Rachel Christie and as we're um, in, uh, anticipating a lot of um, new things coming up for the fall. Um, and let me go ahead and tell you guys as well that you can catch our uh, some of our past episodes on uh, Theology Matters um, as well as some of our um, uh, our, our in-house um, discussions and uh, facilitations and, de- and debates, et cetera, from the campus right on our uh, on our um, YouTube page at uh, Rachel Christie at Winthrop University. So you can check that out. Um, also download it there. We have Devin's dialogue that he did um, last week, uh, or uh, two weeks ago actually, with um, a debate with a uh, atheist, Chris Allison, which was a very um, intense but very eye-opening debate. So uh, you would definitely want to check that out, and we have some more dialogues like that coming up soon. But today we have a very special show, um, a very um, personal show for us because we uh, have been um, personally affected by the life and ministry of Dr. Norman Geisler. We have got had gotten to know him as um, not only a professor, but as a friend and as a mentor, and so he um, affected our our lives in a, in an intellectual way as well as um, in a spiritual way, and there's no way that we would be doing these things, um, such as this podcast, such as um, being full-time missionary um, apologist um, at the college campus, uh, ministering, um, do, uh, apologetics ministry in the jail, et cetera, without uh, Dr. Geisler's influence in our lives. So we are eternal, eternally grateful for that and for his legacy and um, and sorely miss his presence, but um, are thankful for his life and for all that he um, poured into those of us along the way. And so we have a very, very special guest who can um, definitely shed light um, on his life and legacy from a very up close perspective, um, being that he was raised in the home and he was raised by Dr. Geisler, um, and that is his son David Geisler. And um, David uh, is actually the uh, head of the Norm Geisler International Ministries, um, which is a global movement um, in the East and in the West. Um, David is an apologist of his own right, um, having earned a um, a master's degree from um, Dallas Theological Seminary um, and um, actually two master's degrees and then also a doctorate of ministry and apologetics from Southern Evangelical Seminary, which we know that his father was the the proud co-founder of and um, an esteemed um, prison emeritus of. Um, He's been involved in a, a ton of parachurch ministry, a ton of apologetics ministry all around the world um, and uh, every nation that, that you can imagine. And um, he has a um, has also has the opportunity again to grow up um, with, uh, with Dr. Geisler. So he had uh, a very um, hands-on uh, training from the best in, um, in terms of apologetics. So, um, at this time, I'm going to bring David on, and we're going to discuss um, some things regarding his dad's life legacy and a exciting new documentary that's coming out that you will definitely want to to know about and to um, to uh, get for your own uh, for your own edification. So, David, are you there with us today? I am. Great. I'm so glad to to have you. I'm so glad that. You agreed to come on. I, I know that there's 
a lot going on, um, and you know, just from your family perspective, and in terms of dealing with um, the loss of your father, I know this is very new, and and also I know some from a ministry perspective, as you all are, are moving forward with with the the, the vision of of NGIM, and I know we'll talk a lot about that during this show, which I'm excited to hear about what what's um, happening and what's going to be happening going forward. Um, but just before we even jump into um, the start of NGIM, um, just share with us um, what was it like growing up uh, in the Geisler household with Dr. Norman Geisler, a uh, professor <laughs> and philosopher and apologist extraordinaire and just this amazing Bible um, theologian who we all know from that perspective. Well, I'll I'll share with you a positive and a negative. The positive okay. was, that's, that's, yeah. I, uh, ever since I accepted Christ when I was five years old, I actually don't mm-hmm. remember a time in my Christian faith that I had ever any doubts. Because if mm-hmm. I ever had a question, all I'd have to do is ask right. my dad, and he'd he'd have an answer for me. Now the negative is, you know. Uh-huh. I could never win a debate with him. <laughs> Even <laughs> when I was right, I was still wrong. <laughs> but, uh, but but the uh, negative. I'm sure he was probably. Did, did I'm probably sure wait, he was probably uh, using some. Okay, here. Yeah, yeah the positive only. I'm sure that um, with a, a philosopher of that caliber, um, it would be kind of hard to argue your way. Uh, out of a lot of things, or justify a lot of things growing up. So, <laughs> so but, it probably kept you from a lot of things thankful. that the rest of us got into. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm very thankful, though, for the things uh, that I did learn because uh, now I have an opportunity uh, as an uh, mm-hmm. adjunct professor at uh, Southern Union Juggle Seminary to pass on mm-hmm. what I was taught and and hopefully uh, share with the next generation of Christian apologists that we're raising up mm-hmm. how how to actually use some of this uh, evidence in a more fruitful way in our witness, because that, that's been the passion that I've had ever since I was a little boy. Absolutely. That's, that's wonderful. And, um, you know, and, and your, your mother's just so lovely as well, um, and I know that she – um, you know, such a godly influence in your in your home and growing up, and, and continues to be. And if we can just continue to pray for her, um, they were married for at least yeah. 63 years, 64 years, something of that. Of that nature. Sixty-four years. Sixty-four years. That is a long time. That is a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. Marriages definitely don't don't stand those the test of time like that um, many times unfortunately anymore. But um, yeah, let, let's just let's go into NGIM and um, and again NGIM is is just the, the acronym for Norm Geyser International Ministries and um, it's like we, like I shared earlier it's a, a global movement and. Um, Go ahead and share with us about how that started and um, what, sure. what what that was all about. Sure. Uh, before I, I do that, let me just say just a word. Uh, I have literally sure. got cards, letters, and Facebook posts and emails from people all around the world um, mm-hmm. you know, talking about the impact my father has had and how sad they are. Uh, that he's going mm-hmm, home uh, mm-hmm. with the Lord. And I just want to acknowledge, first of all, to your listeners, that I realize it's not mm-hmm. just my family uh, that's uh, sad mm-hmm. and mourning. There are a lot of people that my dad has impacted through his writings mm-hmm. and his interaction. And, and there are a lot of people mm-hmm. that are still grieving. And uh, I just want yeah. to acknowledge that, that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it yeah. just may take some time. For us to all kind of, um, um, you know, heal mm-hmm. from uh, just, you know, the trauma of, of losing him. I know, you know, uh, mm-hmm. he and I uh, actually uh, 
started this ministry four years ago, Norm Guys International Ministries, and I mm-hmm. feel a sense of loss uh, that my uh, partner is gone, and, yeah. and uh, now I'm, I'm kind of having to uh, uh, to continue go forward, which I'm happy to do, but yeah. it just feels a little bit lonely, but but that's okay. Yeah. Um, but let me, well, let me tell you a little. Up, the fact that. Yeah, I was going to, just before you get, jump into my, my answer to my question, I, the, the right. fact that there's so many people that are grieving and still grieving, yeah. I think it speaks to yeah. the, the caliber of your dad's witness and his and his personality and his integrity Absolutely. Um, and how he made, um, you know, it was interesting. Um, I know that your family was in at the seminary. We went um, after the memorial service that Saturday um it was an a, a informal reception at Southern Evangelical Seminary, and um, many right. of us got the opportunity to share um, Dr. Geiser's impact on us personally. And um, it was so interesting because it was, you, you know, you was, we were all, it was almost as if we were all thinking that we were the only one he was, like, pouring into in this very right. real and personal way. But you just heard, as we listened to everyone's stories, we were like, man, he was like, everyone felt this. So it wasn't like just, it, it wasn't a select few that right. um, he, he picked, that he cherry picked. You know, I, I told, I, I shared how, you know, just um, driving him uh, just sometimes uh, around to different events and things in our little beat up, um, little Dodge Caravan. And, you know, our old, you know, with 200,000 miles on it and just have an opportunity to, to talk with him and to, to hear his wisdom and to ask some questions. And him never, um, I can't recall a time, even when he was exhausted and he'd been teaching a lot and traveling, that he ever would just, you know, say, I'm not, I'm not going to answer that. I don't feel like talking, you know. He always... Um, took the time to, to do to answer the questions and to do so very thoroughly and satisfactorily. But it was just interesting to hear the other stories that they all had the same experiences um, with him. And so that's just, uh, for, I'm sure as a son, that has to, um, you know, just make you feel even more um, grateful for that legacy and that that he that he's left with not only your family but with so many others. So um Absolutely. very special. Very special. Well family. you know um, and I'm, you and I've yeah. talked about this most uh, that he was a father mm-hmm. figure to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um he was a mm-hmm. fucking father to a lot of people and he he really mm-hmm. genuinely cared about others and he he put mm-hmm. others above himself. I mean, I can testify most of uh, the, 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 of his life uh, that I, that I, mm-hmm. uh, parts that I that I actually observed. Uh, he was always putting people first, and he never mm-hmm. uh, made an effort to try to promote himself or. Um, right. Uh, in, in fact, I I think I told you this. He once told me this, uh, gave me this piece of advice. Probably one mm-hmm. of the best. Advice he ever gave me. He said he didn't think that a person, a man or a woman, should have any more influence than what God wanted him or her to have. Mm. And I've always thought, well, you know, that's mm. one of the reasons why he was not just a great apologist, a great philosopher, a great theologian. He was actually a great mm-hmm. Christian. And this is one of the, the reasons. One of the examples of why he was such a great Christian is because he really mm-hmm. humbly uh, walked uh, in obedience and service to God, and he didn't promote himself. He just continually right. served the Lord and uh, with with the convictions that God has gave him. And you know that's a legacy mm-hmm. passed on to me. You know, my my prayer is that I'd be able to to follow through and, and to be that kind of example as well to others. It's a very, it's a high, it's a high um, uh, caliber of an example um, to to look yeah. at, and you know, like as, as you were saying, um, you know, though he was your physical father, many, I mean, to to those of us, um, there were some, you know, who who many of us who 
did not have um, the greatest father uh, figures in our lives or either had no father figure in our lives, you know, which was the case for, for me for most of my life. And so um, having someone, um, you know, I, I think it wasn't uh, maybe not just having someone pour into you, but having someone who um, of his – uh, with his busy, busy calendar, which just always boggled my mind because I'm, I'm like, how is he still traveling? I mean, up until, I mean, recently, how is he just yeah. traveling internationally and cranking out books yeah. and teaching and and two seminaries and I mean, but having someone who is who is that busy and invested in doing such important work to um, to actually take time for you and when they, every time they saw you made you feel like just this very, like the most important person in the world um, yes. to those of us who didn't have that um, kind of relationship with our earthly father, um, it just, it made um, a huge, huge difference. And I think I didn't realize that until you know, until he left, um, and I'm sure many, you know, as, we, as I talk, many of us didn't realize that until he left, um, and I, you know, just on another kind of um, a side note as well, for myself as a, as a black woman, um, not to, to bring up, you know, make race like an issue here or anything, um, sure. but I, there were many of the, the black students who were one of the main ones who um, felt that very fatherly, protective role from him. Um, right. And I mean, I don't think that he did that any more so for us than for other students, but um, just in our culture that tells us that, oh, there's all this division and, you know, um, you know, older, you know, uh, people of an older generation don't, you know, that we don't, we don't get, get along on racial lines and things like that. He he broke right. all of those um, barriers, um, and he did not care about that one bit. Um, in fact, he 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 sought us out, you know, in a sense, and really yeah. cared for us and really encouraged us to be a positive influence in our culture and in our community. So, um, yeah. that just goes a long way um, to say about him. So, we will before I start crying, we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, the start of NGIM and um and what that looks like and then we have, you know, uh, uh some other uh and then talk about the documentary and uh that sure. exciting uh bit of news too. Sure. So let me make a, a long story short. Nine years yeah. ago, uh my father mm-hmm. called me for my wife, uh, my Chinese Singaporean wife. And my three kids, mm-hmm. we were living in Singapore, and mm-hmm. my dad said, uh, when are you coming back? And I thought he meant to visit, and I said, <laughs> well, uh, we were going to come back next uh, year. And he said, well, no, that's not what I mean. When are you moving back? And I said, well, Dad, mm-hmm. we were planning here for another 10 years because, uh, you know, I had a thriving well, tell, ministry. Well, tell us what, of, you were, what you were doing. Yeah. Well, I I was teaching uh, in in uh, seminaries in uh, Singapore and all throughout Asia, t- mm-hmm. teaching missionaries how to apply apologetics in evangelism, and that was my uh, mm-hmm. specialty. And when I told mm-hmm. my dad that that we wouldn't be back for another ten years, this is literally what he said to me. And this was nine years ago. <laughs> he said, "Well, I'll be mm-hmm. dead by then." Wow! I, I imagine how prophetic <laughs> he was when he said that. I know. Uh, because if, if I had waited till ten years to come back, uh, wow, be, be home with the Lord. Uh, and so, wow. anyway, so we started talking about it, and sure enough, God was in it. Um, you know, my father never asked me for anything, and so I figured I better at least pray about it and make sure this wasn't uh-huh. what God had intended all along. And sure enough. Uh-huh. A bunch of miracles. A half a year later, we were back in Charlotte. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember. Um, yeah, I remember him and, and your mom being really super excited about you all. I think more the more the grandkids 
than anything, though. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Being that oh, here. <laughs> well, that's what God did. That's the hook that God used to to get him to ask wow. me to come back. Then four years yeah. ago, the four years after that, then um, uh, it became clear to both my dad and I that we were supposed to start Norm Geisler International Ministries. And then hmm. um, what what happened was he and I started traveling together. And uh, mm-hmm. not only do we just apologetics, but, you know, my strength is actually how to use uh, uh, apologetics and evangelism. And so we, we right. actually complement each other pretty well. We started doing that mm-hmm. together. And then a year later, um, I, was, um, I was asked to teach a uh, doctoral class as an adjunct professor mm-hmm. uh, at Southern New yeah. Jericho Seminary, which is what I've been doing uh, uh, in, in Asia for the seven years I lived there. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. from there, just we mm-hmm. started blossoming. And now we have yeah. um, different people we've trained in different parts of the globe. Yeah. So now you'd be, do- you'd be doing what you were doing around the world that you have been trained to do uh, pretty much by your dad, I'm um, sure others as well, but primarily by him. Um, in turn, and you were incorporating the the knowledge that you learned into the the evangelism, um, and then uh, here you are back in in Charlotte area, and you're uh, you're teaching the students at the seminary that your dad co-founded to do these things. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a real time. blessing. Yeah, and uh, and one of the one one of the things that um, I'm very thankful to the opportunity to be a part of is this uh, documentary uh, that we're making mm-hmm. on my dad's life. We we actually started this about a year and a half ago, um, and um, uh, when my father went home to be with the Lord uh, on uh, I think it was what. July, um, what was it? Mm. July twenty first. Oh. I can't remember what date, date that was. Um, but I only had two more scenes for the documentary to shoot. One was a baseball oh, wow. scene, and, and the other was a burial scene. Wow! And uh, I just thought, wow, God, how prophetic that you um, are allowing us. <laughs> Uh, to film his life, his life story, you know, uh, from the very beginning all the way to the end. And uh, uh, right. that was uh, – well, you think ab- it, Well, you think about that too, ahead. David. I mean, it, I mean, those of us who are alive now um, or who in this generation at least – I mean, I'm, I'm 40, but so, you know, those of us, you know, even before my generation had the opportunity to personally – um, maybe hear your dad teach in some way, um, and you know, as his books have been written, to and and to be taught by him, um, and so there's going to be a generation that um, isn't going to have that face to face encounter with the Dr. Guys or at the conferences like he like he has been over the years, and so that is the um, that's so neat that this documentary. Um, so when my little girl gets a little older, you know, who sits, um, I can show her this and say, you know, this was who really um, opened it. I mean, not just influenced and taught us, but this, he really, um, he opened the door for the modern apologetics movement in a way that um, I don't think that, I, I think God, I mean, well, God specifically ordained him to do that. Um, and uh, my, it's so interesting now. Even um, my, our students, we typically uh, they love, for instance, his his um, old debate, <laughs> and um, yeah. we we get we, we get such a kick out of, uh, or they get such a kick out of, uh, you know, sometimes the hairstyles and the certain, like the John, the old John Ankerberg uh, show and the the kind of the commercial breaks that. Um, things that are more uh, modern now, you know, that they're used to. Um, it, but it's, it's just neat that that, that, that that is going to be preserved in a documentary. Um, 
that summarizes who he was and where and where we are as a modern apologetic student so that we don't forget. Well, and and the thing that I'm really excited about is that I, I understand that the, the Christian millennial generation, uh, some mm-hmm. of them don't uh, read as much, and so uh, right. we plan to end this documentary to teach them something uh, that will help them to uh, uh, develop stronger roots in their in in their faith in Christ and so so potentially we could we could reach a whole lot of people uh, and equip a whole lot of people uh, that don't even know what the word apologetics means right for a long time and encourage them to to read uh, these these works that have shaped so many of us you know again like you're right I mean as, as time continues and progresses and 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 young people are reading less and less. I think this will, as they see your dad's life played out before them, they will understand the reasons for going back and reading all these, you know, these these materials that he wrote and that others like him wrote, um, and why that's so important in developing um, not only to be a great apologist and defender of the faith, but just you know, a, a round a, a well-rounded Christian uh, in general. So. I'm, um, I'm super excited about that. Now, um, as far as the documentary, um, do you have a, a release date that, that you're that you're aiming for, or? Yes. Well, okay. So we, we, yes, we we plan to introduce the trailer at the next mm-hmm. uh, National Apologetics Conference in October. Okay. So in October. and then okay. and then uh, sometime. Uh, in the uh, the first quarter of of 2020, uh, that's that's when we're shooting for it to be released, um, and Wonderful. we may even um, uh, try to get it released in in the theaters in certain places okay. around the country, yeah. and then uh, eventually we'll we'll make that available uh, through DVDs, and uh, people can. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, show that at their church. One of the things we're we're combining our ministry and doing with the documentary is we're telling churches that you can show this documentary in your church, and if you would like our staff mm-hmm. to come and answer questions after the documentary, right. uh, we have so right. many resources. One one of my visions of taking NGIM further is we want to combine apologetics, uh, evangelism. And discipleship, mm-hmm. and so, and we want to mm-hmm. we want to take my father's teachings of philosophy, theology, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, apologetics, and mm-hmm. uh, integrate that into our evangelism and discipleship models. And I I think that that That's would even awesome. have a greater impact on Christians yeah. all around the globe, and as well as non-believers. Right, because um, I, you know, as I think as we talked about millennials and the new generations, and you know, even I, as a as a campus minister, forget uh, can't keep up with the different uh, it flies and the you know, not, you know, everything <laughs> the, with the different. <laughs> yes. Um, I just sometimes give up on some of that, you know. Um, but yes. as we're as we're uh, as this generation is is coming. Coming up, we, we're noticing obviously that they are just they're much more relational um, than uh, like our parents' generation even. You know, um, they are exactly. very um, they're very um, it's and and this is why ideas are so sweet. That's why critical thinking is so important because many times we, what we what we have to counter is that they are relationally. Um, involved with people who have certain ideas that influences them, and so, um, and you know, bad ideas that influence them. And so, what we can do is to help them to become influencers um, in a relational way. And I, I love that. That is the direction that NGIM is, is going, and that you'll be able to use that information because the information is key. You have to have the information right. in order to share it. Sure. Um, but then exactly. also understanding how to share it 
in a way that's very relational. Now, I did want to bring on um, Paul Compton as well, another um, special person who is involved in a great work that is either has either been released or is released, but I want him to talk about um, just for a few moments as well um, about a resource that is available for um for, for people to get their hands on that they will definitely want to get their hands on. Um, and Paul and I have had the opportunity to uh, work together through Ministry of Thrasher Christie, but he's been involved with uh, NGIM as well. So, Paul, um, are you there, buddy? Yes. Yes. I appreciate okay. the wonderful, opportunity wonderful, to come on. Yeah, and so i got David still on here with us. And so, Paul, tell, well, first tell, tell me how, or tell us, I'm sure David already knows, but Tell my audience um, how you came or, or your role kind of as you've come alongside NGIM and that. Well, the, so the way that I got to know Dr. Geisler, like many folks um, at, at the seminary, I, I went to a conference. I just picked up one of his books. Someone was giving away books as they were uh, graduating. So I was in Bible college. Mm-hmm. I saw this book by Norman Geisler. Uh, it was an old mm-hmm. copy of Christian Apologetics. Went to a conference mm-hmm. where he was speaking, and I'm like, "Hey, this is this is the guy, right?" Mm-hmm. And of course, he said, "Hey, you should come yeah. over and check out the seminary. Come stay with Barb and I. I could stay with you and, <laughs> and he, Barb." That, that was again. That I know again, right? That's one of the <laughs> things that was so interesting. So just come over to the house and have some ice cream. Can't come see me and Barb. Yeah, and that, he, that's just how he was. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he skipped the Barb, but it was just Barb, right? So yeah. Norm, and of course, when he called me, he's like, hey, Norm Geisler. I'm like, hi, Norm, uh, <laughs> which I would never call him. Of course, Dr. Geisler. Right. But, uh, right. but, but along the way, you know, at the seminary, I got to know him uh, better. Uh, in fact, I did a lot of the audio visual stuff over mm-hmm. at the seminary. And in fact, he had me give yeah. instructions to the professors there once and so I, I wrote it out, handed it to all of them, and said, uh, called it the sound doctrine. And so I think he appreciated mm-hmm. my sense of humor because I thanked him for mm-hmm. allowing me or entrusting me with the sound doctrine of the seminary. But um, <laughs> I took on this project a few, um, uh, I guess, about three years ago. And mm-hmm. Dr. Geisler had mentioned that he had some, he had all these articles that he's written over the years, and he was wanting to preserve them. Now, I figured Mm -hmm. at the time he had written about 100 books, so I figured, well, how many articles could he have written? Right. So when I got to his house. He had time to really write articles, right? (laughs) Right. I mean, and and the books he's written are all, they're all big, right? (laughs) So (laughs) I, uh, I, I went over to his house, and he offered me a free suitcase. Uh, and he said, you're going to need it. <laughs> and so we loaded up. We filled that thing completely with, with articles that he's written over the year. Wow. And, it, boy, it, it, it's been a privilege to work on, on the project. Now, I can say, so we've we released mm-hmm. the first volume. There are five volumes with over 200 articles. Wow. And these were what I believe 1964 is the the year that we began with his mm-hmm. published articles. Mm-hmm. And it, it was fascinating to to read through these. Now, many people may not know, but when he was in high school, he was virtually illiterate, um, so, something mm-hmm. which I think the documentary uh, that, that David was talking about, that, that highlights how God took, took him at, at that level mm-hmm. and, and that weakness and, and completely mm-hmm. turned that around. And made it a strength, wow. and how God used that. Wow. Hmm. But to show God's one, I guess on, on, that God's stand on His life for sure. Yeah, and I, it seemed to give him a great deal of of humility that he realized mm-hmm. that this scholarship, all all of these gifts given to him, that that they were from God. Right. What what I appreciated as as I was going through this, uh, it, his writings he wrote 
articles for magazines like popular magazines, but mm-hmm. also campus newsletters. And then I started finding newspaper articles where he was doing interviews and, and, edit, and editorials. Mm-hmm. And, of course, there were the, the academic journals, but then devotional articles. Mm-hmm. And then I found that he was writing tracts and book reviews and commentaries. Mm -hmm. And then there were encyclopedia entries and dictionary entries. He he was just, Mm -hmm. it was like a rapid fire approach dealing with every kind of Mm -hmm. issue that was facing the church, attacks on the inside, attacks from outside. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think readers will appreciate that journey. We put these in chronological order so that um, folks can walk through his earliest writings and, and see how he progresses and addresses the issues over the years. Um, but it, it's um, been a real blessing to do that. And that's going to give, again, um, I think, uh, again, the, the scholar, Dr. Geisler, um, which we uh, many people uh, uh, know, this is going to give us more, uh, maybe more of an in, insight into the – the personal guys or the the everyday guys or who was right just his writing that he um was working on um and, and not necessarily the the big uh volumes like big uh you know baker and you know encyclopedia um and these sort of things so i'm i'm really excited um to get this as well we we uh we've ordered as well now i know that um it is available the Collected Essays of Dr. Norman L. Geisler, now Volume 1, from 1964 to 1979, is available for, available for purchase now that Paul um, has has uh, edited. And now it says, now are you, is it, uh, is it pre-order now, or is it available to be shipped now, or? Yeah, it's available to be shipped, or you can, of course, get the digital, the Kindle version. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Okay. The the other yeah. the other four volumes I, will be released shortly. Okay. I was gonna, yeah. and I'll provide the links in the the show description, um, the direct link to that volume um, that you can go ahead and order now. And then of course you'll just want to be on uh, the lookout for the other uh, other four volumes, which that that's just that's amazing to me that. Uh, I mean, I'm excited. I'm 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 excited for Volume One. You know, which I've already ordered, but I'm excited even more. You know, to see how the other volumes unfold in in that. So that's just a really really neat thing that that um a neat project, Paul. And I'm so glad that you were tapped to do that. And um I know that that you um, did well. And I know that you uh, likely personally grew through that process as well as you as you had the privilege to read through those and. To, to put everything together there. Yeah, well, I, I'll just mention what what really struck me for the first, I mean, when you're looking at the first two to three volumes, these items were not uh, really found. I couldn't find them in many other places. Because a lot of times I was mm-hmm. looking for better better copies because we had old photocopies mm-hmm. marked up, and, and it, was, it was hard to digitize all of that. So I, I looked for other copies that might be a little bit better, easier to read, mm-hmm. and and they're mm-hmm. just not available. Uh, that that was an yeah. era where where you didn't have things digitized. Mm-hmm. So uh, so it makes available stuff that that hasn't been out there. But boy, he's got lots of one or two page things that really pack a punch, and you really see that um, evangelistic side of him, which is why I, I love what mm-hmm. uh, NGIM is doing and that focus on evangelism. That's something that he caught early on and and focused heavily mm-hmm. on on the need for apologetics in order to be effective witnesses and there are mm-hmm. at least a dozen articles where he's where he's dealing with with that and making the confession one article about excuses about how early on mm-hmm. he had to face the fact that well he hasn't been going out and and evangelizing as he should and uh, there was an evangelist who um, spoke and challenged the crowd, and then he responded to it. And and it's good to pass that excited. challenge on to us too. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm really really excited to get to get our copy. Again, I, I will include the link to the first volume that has been released, and you will want to get that and to um, 
keep that as a, a treasured part of your library and to work through it as well. So, Paul, I just I, I thank you for for that and for um, taking the time to come on and to share that um, work that I know is going to benefit the body of Christ. Oh, thank you. God bless you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. David, what what does that mean to have that volume, that, that type of work of your father to be able to put in the people's hands? Well, it's it's just tremendous the work that uh, Paul has been doing, and uh, um, just uh, you know just spending hours and hours and hours. And I I only heard a little bit. I did not uh, mm-hmm. I hear the you know the whole story of how I, I knew he was right. talking to my dad about this, but I knew mm-hmm. he, I knew he spent a lot of hours putting this together, and it's kind of like. Right. Um, when my when my father went home to be with the Lord, I told you we had mm-hmm. two other shots for the documentary, and uh, yeah. one was a burial scene. And strategically, mm-hmm. God knew uh, that that mm-hmm. would be placed. Uh, and strategically, mm-hmm. God knew that God would be using Paul in this way to organize mm-hmm. all his articles, put them together, so mm-hmm. that uh, uh, that we could continue to pass on the baton. I mean. We were given a stewardship, uh, and we need uh, to pass that on. My my father told me uh, the story when he was teaching at Trinity Seminary. He told me that mm-hmm. William Lane Craig and Ravi Zacharias used to sit next to each other in his <laughs> class. <laughs> and I just think about that. I think about not only has my father impacted Ravi Zacharias and uh, William Lane Craig, but now Ravi Zacharias right. has impacted other of uh, people around the world, and those people right. have impacted other people. And just think of the millions of people yeah. whose lives have been mm-hmm. impacted directly or indirectly right. from what my father taught in the 70s and yeah. the 80s. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that it's, it's, yes. I mean, I don't think we can even fathom it. You know, I mean, I don't. And we won't. We obviously won't know in, until heaven. Um, like it, even just in our, you know, our little ministry. You know, I, I think about our little sphere of influence and the things that right. we see and hear. And just you know, getting a call um, the other day um, from from a young from a, a student who says, you know, I just uh, I have this this friend, eighteen he's eighteen year old friend. And just he and all these questions and all these barriers and all these hurts and all these things that were going on and we just been spending time together talking through his questions and through his his you know all these things that he's been going through and and he came to the Lord and we're like oh wow that's so cool and he's like yeah and he says um, here he is he's I, he wants to, I want him to talk to you right now. He's got more questions. <laughs> and, you know, we were caught off guard. We were caught off guard by that. You know, as we were eating dinner at home, and um, so just things like that that we, um, you know, we when people when we're talking to our students and they're like, "Whoa, this apologetics and this the stuff that you're sharing, we've never heard this before. And this is the best thing ever, and I can't wait to share this with my friends and these sort of things." And I'm thinking, yeah. we didn't come up with this stuff, you know, we just learned it right. from you know from right. the only the greatest mind around. And I have I have, I have one more caller here, and I have Steve Keeney calling in from. California who wanted to share some thoughts and I know he's been connected to NGIM. See you there? Yeah, I'm here. How are you? Um, great. And Dave's here on the line with us as well. Hi, Dave. Hey, How are you? you? Good. I know you had a had a, a, a huge um work with Doctor uh had a, a personal relationship with Doctor Geyser and in, in the ministry as well and maybe you can share some just personal insight of how he impacted you well, as well. Norm was very much an in-depth person, and David will back mm-hmm. up. I, I, I fully believe and strongly believe that David is following in his father's footsteps, not because David's on the mm-hmm. phone, but it's because it's true. It's true. Mm-hmm. And the depth of character that both that come out from both parties, from David and from uh, Norm, 
was tremendous to me. I basically wow. uh, got attached to Norm. I considered him my adopted father, and I would treat him as such, mm-hmm. and he treated me as a mm-hmm. son. I remember one time mm-hmm. we were at breakfast, and he said, you know, as my son, I want to thank you for not eating all of your breakfast. And I chuckled at that, but it just reminded me that, you know, he's a very personal person. He's a very in-depth mm-hmm. person, and um, mm-hmm. he's not afraid to, do, to speak his mind in love. He really did. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, mm-hmm. I believe strongly that now we as Christians who who love the man need to go forth and stand mm-hmm. strong together. I really do. Absolutely, so. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, very just very, when you uh, were, you know, I think I said earlier is when you were in his presence, it was he was there with you. He wasn't. You know, um, I have, unfortunately, I have a habit of sometimes being in my phone and doing and thinking about this and doing, you know, I'm over here when I'm with people um, and, and I'm working on that. But when he was with you, he was very intentional about his time with oh, yeah. you and oh, yeah. very thoughtful about his time with you. I mean, I, I, I you know, like you said, I, I remember times when he uh, was talking to us, you know, Devin and I about health and you know, I want you guys to get healthy, and you know, and we and we have, you know, I want you guys to be healthy because I want you guys to be around and be effective in ministry. And he was helping with that. You know, it's things like that 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 go far beyond apologetics that were very oh, personal. Yeah. Yes, um, that, very yeah, much so. so. He was he was I'm very he thankful. was very he was very very happy. He was very joyful, mm-hmm. and he expressed it. He mm-hmm. expressed it. You know. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember the Absolutely. time that I met with him and Ron Rhodes and drove them over to a place called Teo Linda in Hawaii. It's only about a 20-minute mm-hmm. drive, but I missed the term, and it took 45 minutes one way. For 45 <laughs> minutes, him and Ron Rhodes in the back seat were basically uh, telling corny jokes for 45 minutes, <laughs> and then 45 minutes back. So I had an hour and a half of corny jokes. It was fun. And I'm thinking, here's probably some of the smartest men in Christianity telling corny jokes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, it speaks right. a lot. It really does. He, it really does. He was a real person. Right. He was I a just, real man. Yeah, I, ne- I never felt awkward or, or you know, a, a, just I never felt awkward around him or, or anything. No. I always felt, felt very comfortable um, in his presence. And so, well, I, I appreciate you, Steve, so much for calling in. And, and well, God bless you guys. Very, very touching. Well, God bless you, brother. Thanks, Thanks Steve. So much. Mm-hmm. Bye, bye, David. Bye, bye. All right. So as we as we kind of close out here, David, just um, uh, I think this this show has been just very uh, I think indi- open and indicative of of who your dad was from different perspectives, and um, there's so many more stories. I mean, I think. You know, if you if you did a full documentary with all the stories and all the, <laughs> the neat little you know yeah. instances, um, I, I think you wouldn't be able to contain it yeah. at all. <laughs> you have to do a lot yes, more. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, but but there, uh, all, I, um, I, to get done. Yeah. Yeah, there there's one story that we're going to tell in the documentary that people. Uh, uh-huh. Or may may actually cry when they when when they uh, when they hear this story. I, I don't want to um, uh, give away okay, the punchline. Okay. But uh, okay. at the very beginning of his career, he he had an impact on a uh, atheist. And uh, at the end oh. of the movie, you see what happens to that person and what uh, what happened as a result of my father's uh, personal interaction with. Uh, this other, and it's just one of many, many yeah. kinds of, of stories that we're right. going to, uh, uh, to to tell in the documentary and the people and the lives uh, that uh, that he touched. I had the privilege for the last year and a half of interviewing some of the top mm-hmm. Christian leaders around the country and and hearing uh, hearing different stories, stories that I haven't heard before. I'll give you one. Mm-hmm. One of the stories mm-hmm. was. When I interviewed Ron Rhodes, Ron Rhodes mm-hmm. told me that he had once had a conversation with the late uh, Dr. Uh, John Walvert, who was the 
former mm-hmm. president of uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. My father was mm-hmm. a teacher mm-hmm. there. And mm-hmm. Ron told me that Dr. Walber told him that he hired Norm uh, because he knows that evangelical conservative seminaries tend to drift, and he hired my dad to make sure that didn't happen at Dallas Theological sure Seminary. Right. Isn't that and, amazing? And, yeah. That's so amazing. And, uh, and, you know, I, I you know, and uh, one one story I know particularly about about his time at DTS um, because of my active role in pro life uh, activism here locally in the Charlotte right. area. Um, I, my dad, your dad and and myself had many conversations about that and about, Mm -hmm. and and I know he, I mean, goodness, where we are today is just really, it's a sad state of affairs. Um, but we see, um, we see things kind of turning the tide actually in a positive way, but, um, he, uh, Many people don't know that he took students from DTS, okay, seminary students, out to the the abortion uh, clinic sidewalk to to pray and to counsel uh, women who were abortion minded. Um, exactly. Is 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 you know it it many people few people do that, but to think of right. a seminary professor taking his seminarians right. out to do activism in that manner um, because there was a lot of um, – because Dallas is where uh, uh, Norma Jean McCorvey was, who was actually the Roe of Roe v. Wade. So she had an active right. – she was, involved, uh, she had, was active uh, in the abortion clinic industry at that time before – and well, she later came out of the abortion industry and became pro-life, but right. at that time she was very – uh, pro, uh, you know, in, uh, in the abortion industry. So Dallas was a very um, happening uh, environment for the whole abortion movement in those days. And so that was that was what in the that was in the seventies, right, or eighties? That was 80s. in the yeah, mid eighties. And uh, I got yeah, a chance yeah. to uh, and I got a chance to be with him uh, during that time and and see his interaction with people and. And he was very polite. Uh, he mm-hmm. wasn't abusive. Uh, they they uh, mm-hmm. they they handled it very well. And I was very proud of the, mm-hmm. the, you know what he did at that time because there weren't many people, as you said, that were really picketing, that were standing out there and mm-hmm. and uh, and trying yeah. to turn th- things around. And I think that what yeah. they did back then uh, probably helped uh, make it easier now for. Oh. Uh, other Christians to get involved and to, you know, try to turn this thing around. And to save lives. And, you're, and, and, and again, people don't even know, but I know that your dad was involved with this, some of the conversation about how pro-life activism should look at the clinic, like how, how we right. be respectful but be lawful. And right. he, has, he, he had an influence on even the, the, some of the methodology that, that – that was best, some of the best practices because, again, it was early in the movement, so there was just a lot of just right. a lot of chaos and a lot of different ideas coming in. So, I mean, just again, so many things that we could we could right. say about him um, in this time. Um, but let's, uh, you know, just to, to close out again, uh, the future of NGIM. I know that you said uh, you guys are, are going to continue to, or kind of move towards this uh, the, this apologetic evangelistic type of model, correct? Yes. Uh, we uh, we want to continue his legacy. And so all the things that he taught, we're going to make available on our our website for people to, to have or mm-hmm. or make sure that we – certain books. Uh, we're, with the documentary, mm-hmm. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, we, we plan to sub uh, uh, text uh, the documentary in other languages or – auto dub it in other languages and then see his books get translated in other languages. So when the movie comes out and, and, and and Ravi Zacharias or John Mm -hmm. Ingerberg says, I think everyone should read one of Norm's books. You know, some of those people will actually uh, 
uh, uh, do that, and as a result, uh, it may yeah. be very helpful. So strategically, we are we are trying to raise money to get all the resources mm-hmm. that we need, so that when we send this documentary uh, all mm-hmm. around the globe, um, the Christians mm-hmm. can make uh, the most of this and be better equipped. And go and go and again, I think, like you said, it's not just about um, talk. Uh, it's not just about um, lifting your dad up, but it's about um, making the the resources and the the study and the the, the ways that God used him make, to make those right. ways um, identifiable and accessible to those who need those resources. Because we're going again for years and years, and and I think until Christ comes back, we're going to be saying, Doctor Geiser wrote a book on that. <laughs> Doctor Geiser wrote a book right. on that, and and it was just it, it and and it's honestly it's the way that he writes that makes um that that is, is so important because he just wrote in such a way that was um scholarly enough accessible laity enough for any it was accessible right. for anyone to be able to you can always right. refer someone to a geyser book and not be afraid that they would get overwhelmed and so that's the beauty i think of of this documentary so people uh so you guys need uh continue uh just because Dr. Geiser is gone, uh, NGIM is is, is going to still keep going on strong. Um, exactly. I, and I know that you guys need um, need uh, funding in that, and and people can continue to do that through through the NGIM website. I know I have that that link um, in the uh, that hyperlink here in the show description. So you guys, you know, need funding, correct? And uh, resources and there are there other needs that you might see um, that uh, are coming up or that maybe you know, yes you know, we we, we need more prayer we we need uh, financial partners just so we can finish up uh, making the documentary and getting his books mm-hmm. translated in other languages and we also need more prayer partners so we are in the okay. process of of uh, of starting a prayer chain ministry where you know anyone who you know wants to sign up to and will send prayer requests uh every couple weeks Mm -hmm. and say pray for these events and uh, i've just discovered i mean we've been doing this for four years and i've i've kind of uh been uh my my other mentor taught me to think big Mm -hmm. but uh uh, Mm -hmm. uh start start small and so uh, right. we have started small, and uh, but now I yeah. realize we need a lot more prayer support uh, for the kind mm-hmm. of work mm-hmm. that uh, God has called us to do, to take uh, my dad's right. uh, materials and make it accessible to Christians literally all around the world. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that's, that's the vision mission. of yeah. what we want to do. It's a, it's a big yeah. vision, and, but I like how you said starting starting with uh, with prayer um, you know, and just right. on a personal note, um, right. that's what where God's been bringing me back to is prayer, and He has been right. strategically waking me up <laughs> um, at wee hours of the morning to do just that, hours that I normally would not be up, um, but bringing right. uh, prayer prayer requests, my own my own right. spiritual life. Um, and spiritual uh, deficiencies, as well as the the needs of those around me uh, to, to, I mean, very, just bringing them to light in a very, just a very transparent way. And so he has just been showing me how much prayer is everything. Um, And so um, I I just, I'm so glad that 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 focus is, is going to the ministry. And so, um, d- definitely go to the ngim.org website and uh, just and, and sign up to be a partner. Sign up to uh, receive information and updates. Uh, sign up to become financial partners to help this uh, documentary come out so that others, again, around the world will um, see the value in, in, uh, of these resources for so many years to come. And um, I'm just well, and- grateful. Yeah. I was going to say, in the message we want to help people understand about this documentary, it's called Norm Geisler, Not Qualified. 
And uh, we want people to understand that if God can raise up an illiterate little boy from Detroit uh, and use him to impact Christian leaders around the globe, um, what can God do in our lives if we make ourselves available to him? Wow. That's what it's about. That's a powerful the story. Part. Yes, the availability it is. is, is I, I think we, we overlook that and we um, – uh, we we try to maybe uh, cre- we we try to we're available on our own terms <laughs> um, in our right. own ways. But when we just yes. make ourselves, um, which is not true availability, but when we truly make ourselves available to God wherever we are, with whatever knowledge, however big or small that may be, um, we can see the impact of of a Norm Geisler or of a Billy Graham or of a, a, a Robbie or of a or of, of any of us, and so this um, will prayerfully, you know, inspire everybody from young to old, um, to those who Absolutely. feel who feel that um, those who feel that they don't have, you know, because they they don't feel qualified, they feel like they're not able to be used by God. But again, <laughs> that. Exactly what he wants. He wants us to be uh, to to be just available, right? And so I love I love the title of that. I wasn't aware that, that was it. Uh, uh, unqualified. I love it. So again, just you know, get behind this, support this, and um, to you know, to the theology matters uh, matters audience. I mean, you, everything that we do. I um, hope that you all know that Dr. Geyser has had a very direct impact from our pro-life activism, to our apologetics ministry on the campus, to our evangelism and outreaches, um, to all that we're doing. Um, he has had some um, direct impact in that. And so, David, I just thank you so much for being with us today and for taking the time out. I know that you have a, a big task ahead of you. And we, you know, if you don't, do you mind if I just pray pray for you while we're on the air Um just, sure, that'd be uh, great. For, not just for you, not just for you, but for our listeners and for your family and for for all the for the sure. for the NGI and staff. Um, I know Don Deal and Brad Henson and um, Thomas McKenna. You all have a lot going on. Um, Paul, if he's compiling everything, but let's just let's go to, you know, as you said, prayer is so important. So let's let's just go to the Lord before we end this broadcast. Um, Lord, thank you for uh, for being present in this broadcast, Todd, because we know that um, it wasn't uh, just about Dr. Geisler's life or about NGIM, but, Lord, about lifting up your name so that people will know you, God. That's that's our goal. We want people to know you and to know what it's like to be loved by you and to serve you well, Lord, and to share your love and to share your truth well in this generation that is so lost, Lord. And we, um, as we, as we, you know, as we grieve, I, I just pray for continued comfort for the guys, the family, and for all of us who grieve, Lord, because grief doesn't go away um, after a memorial service. Uh, grief is a process, and it hits in unlikely times, and it hits in waves, and um, it may hit even uh, when. We least expect it, Lord. But I pray that you would allow all to grieve in the way that is um, appropriate and without hope. Because, God, we ultimately do know that um, Dr. Norman L. Geisler uh, is, is with you and that there is no safer and better place to be than to be with you in, in your presence, Lord. And, Lord, I pray for any listening who do not have that assurance that when they um, take the last breath, because we are all promised that um, that will happen at some point. Um, uh, and I pray that they would look to you, that they would come to see Christ as the perfect sacrifice for their own sin, um, because we all are sinners. God, Dr. Geisler, myself, David, everyone, we all we all are sinners, God, and we all need your grace. And so I pray that um, 
everyone would would cling to that truth in these days to come. And I pray for this ministry. I pray for an outpouring of support, Lord, not just uh, financially, please, but please financially yes. let, let these things be so that need to be, Lord. But just also the, the prayer support for, for guidance right. and for um, stability going forward. I pray that there would be no no division, that there would be a, a uh, a unified vision going forward, and and that this ministry, for years and years to come, would impact the entire world for you, that your name would be made known. So we thank you so much for this precious time together. Um, we know that uh, it was ordained by you at this time, Lord, and we thank you above all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So David, Thank you um, so much. Again, we continue to think, continue to think about your family and pray for them. And um, thank again, thank you for your time. And we're we're very very excited. So I, I thank you so much for being on the broadcast with us today. Uh, you're welcome. Enjoy enjoyed it very much. God bless you. Bye bye. And friends, that has been another um, episode of Theology Matters, and um, I'm very um, thankful that you were a, a part of this journey through Dr. Geiser's life with us, um, through, uh, personally and academically through um, his his life and his journey. And I just pray that, again, we would all uh, be mindful that if we're available to God, we can be used by him in ways unimaginable. unimaginable. Again, the links to the NGIM um, uh, site uh, are there in the uh, um, description of the show, um, as well as uh, to Southern Evangelical Seminary, where Dr. Geiser is co-founder and uh, only retired just shortly before his death. So if you are um, thinking of pursuing a seminary education, Um, and to becoming a better and thoroughly equipped apologist and evangelist, I can't think of a place better for you to go and to be a part of than the Southern Evangelical Seminary family. So we encourage you there. Um, Devin and I will be back with you next week, actually, with a really neat show uh, with Dr. Uh, Fazrana um, for reasons to believe as we're going to be discussing the topic of trans humanism in a new uh, book that they have released. And if you don't know what that is, then you definitely need to listen in. And if you know what that is, you still need to listen in. It's a very interesting uh, contemporary topic that um, that needs a biblical worldview answer, which is what we are all about on this show is equipping um, all of us to think biblically and, and critically about 